In, the speaker, sorry. Uh, in reply to your last level. Mr Speaker, can I firstly, um, can I firstly thank, uh, thank those members who contributed to the discussion. I've got to say, Mr Speaker, that the arguments that I've heard tonight, my gosh, they're wimpishly weak. I want to acknowledge uh, Tau Henare for his courage in putting his quarter out there tonight. And I think, he made, I think he made an important statement. And he said, sir, this is an opportunity to be different in the world. And I support that. I appreciate his comments. He also said it's non-threatening. Non-threatening. It's an option. Don't have to do it. Won't get banged on the head. Nothing like that. No, no. You want, if you want to, you can take it up. So I struggle with some of the discussion that's been made tonight. We can talk about the treaty, history, all that sort of stuff, Mr Speaker, but let's cut to the chase. That argument will always be there. What we're talking about tonight is a small statement allowed to be additional to what is already stated in our oaths and declarations. If a person wants to, nothing more, nothing less. And the statement is, I will uphold the Treaty of Waitangi. So some of the discussions that we've had tonight uh, with respect are way off the mark. Uh, I talk um, uh, to uh, my colleague, Louise Upston talking about the notion of having a constitutional discussion beforehand, that's happening. But it doesn't have to be one or the other, it can be both, and tonight's opportunity would have been that. We also talked, uh, I appreciate the comments from Parekura Horomia and Catherine Delahunty in supporting things. Now, talking about New Zealand first, well, probably I won't spend too much time talking about them, because they don't do Māori very well at all. They don't do Māori very well at all. They don't do Māori seats, even though they got in on the back of Māori seats. And they, oh, sorry, they do do Māori All Blacks. That's all right. Wonder why. So that's there. Mr. McKelvey talked about needing discussion and planning. My goodness, uh, this is a simple statement, sir, that allows a person, if they wish, if they wish to make a statement. And actually, sir, I'd say this, that in their heart of hearts, from the discussion I've heard tonight, members actually believe in their heart of hearts that there's no problem with this. But they're bound, like Mr Henare, by the whole notion of being whipped. I mean, planning and discussion around a five-letter statement to be added to, the, to, to a statement that we have in this parliament, I mean, what's the big deal? Somebody's talking about magnitude of change, my goodness. Five words, for goodness sake. Somebody's talking about, he's, he, he made the notion about choice. Well, this is choice. Nonsense. It's choice. It's nonsense when you talk, sir. <laughs> unif, unif, we talked about Reno, uh, Mr. Tiri Cardenas Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Tiri Cardenas, I'm sorry, Reno, eh, Reno, Takuhe. I appreciated his comments as well about the historical nature of a desire from our people to have this statement and similar statements of it in this house. Mr. Yang, sir, you talked about uniformity. Sir, there is no uniformity already. You've got a choice, oaths or declarations. And within that, here's another choice that you, sir, could take a part of if you wished. No compulsion, that's it. You talked about enforcement. Sir, when we come into the halls of parliament, we are already a part of an enforcement regime, which is why Hone Harawira could not go through this process this year. By adding five words, he would have been, along with many of others who wanted to follow this line, able to take up that opportunity. So we talk about consistency, and yet we have oaths to the Queen, to God, wherever, every, wherever else, and yet on a constant basis we contradict that, we contradict that in this House. And this statement, if there was fear about it being a political motive to this, I don't get it. There is no political motive to it. There can't be uh, because it is for those people who choose to take it up. No political motive, pretty straightforward to allow some of us to take up that option. So, sure there's a discussion to be had about the bigger picture about treaty statements, but, but tonight I've got to say that it's with uh, an element of heavy heart that I listen to the discussions tonight for all the rhetoric about the Treaty of Waitangi in this country, for us not to be able to have the courage 
and a commitment to adding five words New Zealand First aside to the, to the, to the declaration and oath in this country, sir, is a sad day. It's a sad day when we cannot take up an opportunity even to taking it to select committee to allow the debate to happen. Surely, surely, at this point in time, with the commitments made between political parties and indeed the founding document of our nation, that we could not find a space to take it to the, to the select committee of this parliament. It's a sad day for us. The balances that Obama got in, the balances that Tauranga Moana Māori are happy, the downside is that today, tonight, in this House, at this point in time, it's noted down in history that some people didn't have the courage to follow it through for this bill. The debate has now concluded. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary, no. Aye. Noes have it. Aye. Over party vote. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes opposed. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 13 in favour. New Zealand First. 8 votes opposed. Māori Party. Kotoru, tokotoru e tautokuanu. Mana. 1 vote in favour. Act New Zealand. 1 vote opposed. United Future. One vote opposed. Ayes are 52, the noes are 69, the motion is not agreed to. Call on members, order of the day number three. Local government.